Nigeria's aviation sector is now at a critical point as airline passengers now face longer flight delays and cancellations following the closure of runway 18L and the increasing hike in aviation fuel coupled with the suspension of aero contractors and Dana Airlines that has created a capacity gap. However, the president of Aviation Roundtable, an industry pressure group, Gwengaoluwo advised airlines to sell tickets at the rate that is commensurate with the amount they buy Jet A1, stressing that a price increase is better than negotiating safety by cutting corners. This situation in the sector is the crux of our discussion on the program. Welcome to Aviation This Week on Channels Television. Thank you so much for making us a part of your day. And Bukola Joe Okitumbi and our flight is set for takeoff. Aviation provides the only worldwide transportation network which makes it essential for global business and tourism. It plays a vital role in facilitating economic growth, particularly in developing countries. Global Airlines had in June 2022 announced an upgrade to its outlook for the airline industry's 2022 financial performance, with a recent spike in aviation fuel headlining the major hurdle for recovery and profitability. According to the International Air Transport Association, industry losses were expected to reduce to $9.7 billion, being an improvement from the October 2021 forecast of $11.6 billion loss. With overall expenses expected to rise to about $796 billion, that's a 44% increase on 2021, which reflects both the cost of supporting larger operations and the cost of inflation in some key items like fuel that is the major headache for local airlines in Nigeria. The problem is you're basically right now uh, selling tickets to buy fuel. And there's so many other things you need to do as an airline. Uh, and, and to sustain all of those things, you, you really need to think out of the box to be very smart with your costs. As Jet A1 supply remains a major issue, airline operators also announced long delays and cancellations to flights in the coming days. And the impact of what AON announced is not far-fetched. The situation at the Abuja airport as passengers face long delays and many unsure of making it to Lagos owing to the scarcity of aviation fuel. Abuja to Meduguri. So they keep cancelling, cancelling flights. So we are not going to accept all this thing. And we are looking for where so that the manager or management to pay us compensation. Because we're supposed to demand compensation. We don't have anywhere to go. We don't have money to accommodate ourselves for one day. So we are dealing for the Nigerian Court Authority to look into the matter so that our money will be given to us. And we are looking for the compensation to pay. In Lagos, passenger numbers around the Muritala Mohamed Airport 2 appears to have dipped as the terminal is home to Dana and Aero Contractors, both airlines not operating at this time. The flight display board in the check-in area tells the story of limited flights, over 30 for the day. A passenger here whose flight is built for 5 p.m. has to wait longer. I booked, I think like a week ago, I booked to Dubai. I just returned back from Dubai. I'm supposed to go back to Abuja now. But getting to this place, they've shifted the flight to 10 after 8. From the board display, early flights departed on time, but there are lingering delays and flight fares are on the rise. Sincerely speaking, ticket prices have really gone up. Uh, the one I booked initially on Ebon was a return flight. It cost about 126,000 naira. Unfortunately, the one I booked just one way now, it's 87,500. It's quite expensive and I wonder how many Nigerians can afford this. Knowing very well that the minimum wage is about 30,000 Naira, 
that's like more than almost times three your salary minimum wage. So I, I, I'm not sure a lot of people can afford air travel now, even though for now it appears to be the safest and the With a persistent scarcity of jet hay one hitting hard at the airlines, the domestic runway closure also adds to the burden of local carriers at this time as they continue to count their losses. By the time you look at about a thousand liters being spent, at the end of the month, by the time you are operating 10 aircraft from Lagos to other parts of Nigeria, with about eight landings per day out of Lagos, you are already looking at about 900 to 1 billion naira on aviation for that you are losing just to taxi to international airport, delaying, halting, being on the queue, and what have you. That is huge. I mean, airlines can't get their spare part shipped in. They can't get Forex. And even the CBN rule now is so stringent. The form M, the form A matter is a major problem. You want to pay as little as $20,000 or $10,000 for a spare part. You will queue. The bank will frustrate you. The, everything is just messing the entire system up. Airlines are not the only sector feeling the pinch. Others in the aviation chain are affected too. Not funny at all for all stakeholders in the aviation sector. We're in business, but the point is, where is the money to pay? The airlines are struggling. So, and we know. So, it's a tough one. You know, in aircraft maintenance, we try to keep a particular percentage of our staff as our, as our permanent staff. The rest are all on ad hoc. So we fly them in or we call them from Portacot, Abuja, Kano, only when there's an aircraft on ground. So when they come in, if there's a sea check for four weeks, we pay them for four weeks, they finish the check and they go back. Then we keep the post holders and the permanent staff as required by the NCA regulation to keep the aircraft maintenance organization afloat and also healthy in terms of safety. Beyond the Jet A1 crisis, Nigerian airlines have lost about 40% of their fleet since last year as the carriers find it increasingly difficult to access foreign exchange to buy spares, among other things. Our guest is the president of the Aviation Roundtable, Dr. Gwinga Lowo. He believes it's time for government to act, but airlines must also sell economic fares to survive the time. The best solution for you as an airline to remain afloat is to factor in all your factors of production, be it fuel, be it FX, be it whatever. And then you say tariff is going to hit the uh, high heaven. So be it. And there are formulas in the industry. Okay? For your tariff to fix it, there is a formula. If fuel is fluctuating, fix it in. If FX is fluctuating, fix it in. And then now go to your regulator and say, how do you see this? You agree. The regulator say, yes, it makes sense. Go ahead. Hit the market. And you know what's been killing this market is man kill man. Okay? Dog eat dog. Instead of charging economic tariff, maybe you have an advantage with, with government. All right? And you are, you are undercutting others. So for you to be able to charge economic tariff, you are charging below. At the end of the day, both the right and the wrong will die. That's why everybody has been dying 10, 10 years. The airline must rise up and face the challenges of the passenger. I mean, passengers have schedule. They should have worked on interlining with partners who can accommodate those travel. And of course, Nigerian passengers should, for God's sake, be more civil. It is better to be alive than to take a flight that is not safe, okay? If you go to motor park and the man says he's not leaving, well, are you going to burn the car? So, 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 so Nigerian passengers should be more civil, you know, have some degree of tolerance that things do happen, sometimes for reasons known or no, unknown. And if our airlines are, are regulating themselves, they won't get to the extent of being coerced. You know, to go, Aero did very well. I'm going for maintenance and, and cancel all schedule. Made arrangement with other carriers to uplift the passengers. That's the right thing to do. Many times they've done that. They overprice themselves. Some will go so high, some will go so low, and some will say, I am doing mixed. A lot of 
theories that are unsubstantiated in other economies. The reality is an airline must operate economically. Economic regulation is heart of aviation because money speaks for everything. Is it maintenance? Is it aircraft? Is it this? Is it that? It's all money. So that's the department that must be strengthened with professionals, people with airline experience, you know, who knows how to read what is a tariff, what is a tax, you know, separate tax from tariff. It's not an income until it is earned. The money given to an airline is not an income. A CAA must be able to understand all that. They must adopt plenty of technological development in capturing commercial activities. You know, not putting politicians from different walks of life to head economic regulation. The agencies are staff of funds. They have to give standards, except if we are saying that they are not delivering standards, they are just taking the money. Like we have criticized fund for many times, check due maintenance are not done, maybe due lack of funds or whatever. Our airport is one of the worst in the world that you, once you arrive at MMA, you are hissing. It's not upgraded over the years, so they need their funds. So if they need their funds and government is not running it, they say it's commercial. They have to get the funds from users and airlines their major user. An airport of Nigeria is one of those that does not allow other activity minus the airline. Where is the trading? If you get into Dubai Airport or Turkey, you think you are in shop right. If care is not taken, you will lose your way to your gates where you are shopping. When do, when do we get there? Passengers are not, your, 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 your family cannot even escort you into departure hall. You have so many security men doing one thing or the other. That is not an airport. The airport should generate money from outside airlines, from all concessionaires. You buy cars, you buy jewelry, name it. But our airport is not generating money else. It's only the airlines. So they make them dry. So, so you, you won't blame them until they have that expansion. The new expansion in MMA, I don't know whether it's operating yet, due to so many constraints, master plan was not followed. So we're doing a lot of things wrong in the sector. Still on the aviation sector crisis, but this time the federal government says it's considering measures that will address the situation. At a meeting with airline operators in Nigeria, the Minister of Aviation, Senator Hadi Sirica, revealed that there are plans to approach the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited to get aviation fuel at a controlled price for operators. Uh, give us some allocation to uh, airline operators of Nigeria. Uh, in the past, I remember there was 10,000 uh, metric ton of the product was given to the airline. That helped at a controlled price. Control meaning that the landing uh, price plus their cost and a bit of margin, you know, and that helped the sector. So uh, that we will approach uh, government as, through NMPC and Duke Oil to ensure that that is sustained and that is made available. And uh, the users of Jet A1, it's, uh, civil aviation and civil aviation only so we would uh, approach and try to get that um, done. And the foreign exchange, of course, you know where it sits. The central bank and, of course, the Ministry for Planning, uh, Finance and Budget and National Planning, uh, and the Central Bank of Nigeria. Primarily, those are the sources. In the past, they had uh, helped, but because of the significance and the importance of the sector, um, we would approach and ensure that we are able to get this foreign exchange um, at the official uh, rate. When Aviation This Week returns, old planes are now being used as a school in Ghana. That's after the break. Do join us again. Hundreds of meters above the village of Yenapeng in northern Ghana, a small drone locks its sights in six airplanes. Not soaring through the cloudless sky, but parked in the middle of a verdant field miles away from the nearest runway. 
The drone's 16-year-old pilot, Jenequen native Abdulatif Zachariah, stood with his father Dana in the shadow of a vintage Antonov crop duster, one of six planes that world-renowned artist Ibrahim Mahama brought to the village late last year. I mean, I was born here, but I grew up in the capital in Accra. And Accra, over the years, you've come to understand that it's almost it's a bubble, like many centers of capital around the world. And the true work that needs to be done most often is actually in communities outside the centers of capital. You know, uh, if you're able to do anything within these spaces that transform ideas, lives, and things like that, in the future, it means that it's going to make the entire country, or even the entire world, even a much better place. Their grandeur, almost startling amid the flat and sparsely developed landscape, draws a daily stream of visitors to Red Clay Studio, the multi-acre compound that Mahama has for three years been building into an open-door communal education hub. For me, it's very important, first and foremost, to be able to create an institution that is flat, that can be able to, that is horizontal, that can be able to reach dip different people regardless of their background, they are coming from class, struggle, whatever it is, uh, political ideology and all that. At the end of the day, art is supposed to be able to create uh, a, a, a space that would allow us to be able to go into a certain sense of dialogue, either with technology or with ecosystems or with architecture or, yeah, any other thing. Situated within the very community his father was born in, Red Clay is made up of several warehouse-sized buildings built from recycled materials and locally sourced red clay bricks. During the school year, crowds of students regularly thread Red Clay's towering halls, hearing lectures on history or conservation before exploring the gutted chassis of former commercial airliners. The material choices are typically of Mahama, who made a name for himself repurposing unwanted or discarded objects like shoe shine boxes and industrial equipment into monolithic works of contemporary art. We want to be able to build an institution that can reinforce the idea of thinking, collective thinking. Yeah, it's not so much about producing work that can also inspire artists, but produce thinkers. If children grow up and they can think differently from what their predecessors were thinking, it is a step towards a certain kind of eminent change within our society. For Zachariah, who has made daily visits to Red Clay since he was nine years old, the centre is an opportunity for local children to explore topics otherwise closed to them, helping them build confidence and learn more about who they really are. To his father, Dana, who has developed a passion for aviation while working as Red Clay's caretaker, the planes are symbols of a brighter future. I'm very happy because it is a future generation that we are sowing here. Everybody wants to sow a good seed. So when you sow good seeds, inshallah, tomorrow it will germinate. Red clay is a symbol of the power that aviation holds for the mind. Still on Aviation E, London Heathrow Airport operator insists its capacity cap will remain in place until airlines increase ground handling resources to a level that matches demand. The operator introduced the cap of 100,000 daily departing passengers after flight cancellations, aircraft parking, logistic issues and baggage problems became unacceptably low. Airline ground handler performance has been much more stable since the cap came into effect and a marked improvement in punctuality and baggage performance. The airport operator remains unprofitable with adjusted pre-tax losses reaching £321 million for the first half of the year. And telecom companies have been at loggerheads over the deployment of 5G mobile services over concerns that the powerful signals could interfere with airplane systems. The Airport Council International warned that the effect of decisions on passengers and flights could be felt for weeks.
based on currently available information, the resolution of these 5G issues sounds like it will be lengthy and gradual, taking place over weeks and months. In the meantime, passengers and shippers should expect delays and disruptions until the issues are fully resolved. The 5G technology needs concentrated base station rollout to achieve its monster speed and beauty. Airlines are expressing the fear that with such concentration of service deployment close to the runway in some airports, planes with high-end modern avionics, especially those equipped with radio altimeters, which pilots find very useful during landing and takeoff in bad weather conditions, could face some challenges. The frequency band that 5G uses is very, uh, very similar to the frequency band that radar altimeters use. Uh, and there's possibility that there's interference or false signals with the 5G uh, and a radar altimeter. So you can, uh, what you would rely on with the radar altimeter giving you a certain altitude above the ground, it may be erroneous based on interference with 5G telephone frequency. For the United States, it seeks to reach a solution on 5G deployment that protects air safety. At the moment, the FAA has now determined that 20 types of radio altimeters are safe and reliable in 5G environments and has thus approved 90% of commercial aircraft for takeoffs and landings in low visibility at most of the nation's airports. Bilateral air service agreements are treaties signed between countries to allow international commercial air transport services between them. These agreements provide the framework under which identified airlines from the two countries fly into designated ports in each other's country. The bilateral system has its basis under the Chicago Convention and associated multilateral treaties. Actually, the principle of BASA is based on reciprocity. And this is one area that everybody who is involved in BASA negotiation must pay attention to. What is BASA agreement in terms of uh, reciprocity? If you want to come into my country, I give you two slots. If I want to come into your country, you give me two slots. That is reciprocity. Every region, they have their own standards. American standard is there, the European standard is there. Their own standard could be the type of aircraft you need to use, how many aircraft you have in your fleet before you start operations. Buses are negotiated based on nine freedoms of the air, which include the privilege to fly across a state's territory without landing, the privilege to land for non-traffic purposes, for example, for refueling, repairs and maintenance. The privilege of an airline from one country to carry traffic from its own country to another country. The privilege of an airline from one country to carry traffic from another country to its own country. And the privilege of an airline from one country to carry traffic between two other countries, providing that the flight originates and terminates in its own country. As of 2016, Nigeria retained its attractiveness with 90 of these agreements, although most remain lopsided. The big airlines we have today were encouraged by their government, they were sponsored or financed by their government, and they are in what the state they are today because they had gov the government backings, they had the backings from the state. Here, if we expect Nigerian airlines to grow, you must protect the market, Nigerian market. If you expect the air, domestic air, the airlines in Nigeria to grow, you must encourage them and give them what it takes. While many countries across the world still maintain these agreements, the COVID-19 pandemic appears to be changing the status quo. That's all we have for you on the program. Next week is another date. I'm Kola Joe Kitsumbi.